Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another meeting of the Inkster City Council. Today is Monday, September the 18th, 2023, and the time is now 7.30 p.m. Before we get off into our meeting, please, Reverend Williams, prayer, please. Father God, we come no other way but leaning on your everlasting love. Realize, Father, where there's unity, there's strength. Father, I ask that you bind us together with love, unity, and strength as we conduct the business of this city. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Council Member Williams. Here. Council Member Chisholm. Here. Council Mayor Pro Tem Howard. Here. Council Member Watley. Present. Council Member Washington. Here. And Council Member Shaw. Here. And for the record, Mayor Wimberly. Here. We have a full house. All right, moving right into the agenda. Approval of the agenda? So moved, Mr. Chair. Support. To move to properly support any discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays? Ayes have a motion carries. All right, no presentation. Consent of agenda? Consent agenda, I'm sorry. So moved. Support, second. Been moved and properly supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays? Eyes have it, motion carries. All right, moving right along. Look at that. No boards and commissions. No boards and commissions. Nobody have any commissions. No boards and commissions. Okay. All right. New business. Item A, please, City Clerk. Item 9A is the to consider approving special land use for a, residence, a residency house for medical students at 715 Inkster Road in the B2 Thoroughfare Mixed-Use District. Mr. Pleasure. So moved. So moved. Would the property support it in discussion? Uh, I do have one, Mayor. Please um, go ahead. How many, how many medical students would be in? Gate, please come forward, state your name for the record for the general public, please. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, my name is Gage Belko. I'm uh, one of the planners with McKenna uh, that uh, serves the city of Inkster, so it's nice to see you all again. Um, I was looking through the, um, the uh, room number in here, uh, and it's my understanding that there would be between 8 to 12 students at any given time um, under Dr. Rahal's um, supervision. Um, if doc is Dr. Rahal here tonight? I would actually want to defer some of those business-specific questions to him because okay. I might miss Doctor, please come forth and state your name for the record, please. And if you could, the city clerk has asked for me to, if you could, spell your last name. Please. Yeah. Hey, how are you guys? Hi. Good. So my name is uh, Dr. Omar Rahal. And, uh, yeah, do you want me to present the project? Well, I mean, you can just kind of just tell us what you're doing. Just give us a snapshot. Yeah, so uh, yeah, those are, this is, a, we're opening that building with, a, I'm opening with a group of cardiologists. I don't know if you know the cardiologist, there's on Michigan Avenue, HVI, Heart and Vascular Institute. So they bring in student doctors, doctors that are graduated from abroad, and uh, they need a clinical experience in cardiology, and they rotate with them. And so they, br they come in here for one or two months. So instead of having them going to like uh, random houses here and there, so they have them in a shared housing facility where they can do like didactics and they can do like CPR sessions and they can <coughs> like group them in an educational facility. So we chose that building because it's about nine minutes from, from the place. And we've been sorting out the parking thing because the parking is, is kind of connected to the school. So our decision was to just make our own parking in the front of the building. I already talked to the building planner and we're working on that. Okay. And just for the record, that's uh, Easter Road on- 715. Seven, yeah. Okay. Next to Focus Hope, 
the old yeah. counterpoint starfish building. Yes. Where you guys can add it in your mind. That's a good repurpose, and I actually like that. It's going to really be good. Yeah. Okay. Any questions for Dr. Doctor? Spill your name for the record, please. Yeah. My name is Omar. My last name is two words. It's Nasser Reha. Spell it for us, please. Oh, N-A-S-S-E-R. And the second word is Rahal, R-A-H-A-L. All right. First name Omar. Good job. Thank, Thank you. you so very much. We appreciate you bringing Thank that you. to the city of Inkster. Thank you. Looking forward to the continued service. That's good. All right. Anything else? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays? I just have a motion carries. Item B, please. Consider authorizing the administration to award a contract for renovations requested at the Senior Wellness Center in the amount of not to exceed $300,000. So move, Mr. Chair. Support. Okay. As it relates to just discussion, it's not renovations per se. This is going to be for the company to oversee. You guys are here. Terrence, please come on. Come on up. And just explain exactly what you guys will be doing as it relates to the Senior Wellness Center <coughs> located at the Inkster Recreation Complex. Troy, did you have that picture? We can cue that up so they can kind of see what it is. If you have it, put it on the screen for me. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Terrence Anderson, president of Renaissance City Developers. Uh, our organization, we're a real estate development company with over 100 years of experience. We've been in business for a while now, almost 20 years. Um, we are a team of construction managers, architects, and engineers. Our objective with the Senior Wellness Center is to provide engineering and architectural services, also procurement services, and construction management. So we will oversee the project as the owner's rep of the city of Inkster from A to Z in partnership with our uh, senior partners here. So basically, as part of the grant funding, is $2.5 million. And again, thank you to Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib for actually making this an earmark for this to happen. Of course, thank you to the Commission on Aging, uh, Denise Champagne, of course, the late Theola Jones, um, you know, wouldn't have this even started and initiated. So for us to see today that we, you know, we were, we're going to receive the money because HUD said to us, do you want the money? Let us know we want the money so we can release it to you. So they re they're going to be releasing $2.5 million to the city of Inkster. And the Commission on Aging is going to be overseeing that whole process, of course, working with uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Terrence, Mr. Anderson, Mr. Dodell, Mr. Bivens, along with, of course, um, Mr. Don Jones um, in the planning department. And then, you know, of course, the Commission on Aging with their ad hoc committee overseeing the project. That way, again, it... No matter who's sitting in these seats, who's actually working in the, the, the administration, we know that this is going to get done. So we're really, really excited about it. Congratulations um, to, 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 to the seniors. I'm really excited for you all, for you to have your space. It's, it's been long overdue. So we're looking forward to, to, to getting you out of the basement. <laughs> about that. If I'll do nothing else, man, I can sleep on that one. <laughs> All right, please go ahead now. Um, this, what we're voting on is just the $300,000 for the architectural rendering at this point. So, and we'll be, re we'll be voting on the rest of the money as it. So explain what you're going to be doing, please. So what we'll be doing is we'll be doing the architectural and engineering services. Also, we'll be performing the procurement process. So we'll be working with uh, the partner, senior partners here to put out a bid for construction. We will manage that bid with in conjunction with them to select a proper contractor. Once a contractor is selected, then we will perform contractual management services to ensure that the building is built in a proper time. Mm -hmm. So we're one step in between that as you, of course, the procurement process and all of that, you guys yeah. will be working doing the administrative side of it. Yes, of every, the, yeah. The, the, the commission to say, okay, these are the people that we want to use, but Correct. then you would bring it back to this body. They'll probably actually go through, uh, I'm going to put you on your other hat right now, President Chisholm. Does it go to the planning commission? Yes, I mean, because it's new building, all of that stuff, and we know it is a city building, but would it, it, it would come through the planning commission and then come to the would council, you, right? The site plans and stuff. Right. So. Okay, good. Yep. So that, those are those steps that we would definitely 
definitely for sure. You're overseeing. Yes, yes, the whole entire procurement process. Right. Okay, so tonight the three hundred thousand and any additional monies will be coming back to To the council. To the council. Once the seniors and the overseers have. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Planning commission as well. Okay. Okay. All right, Mayor. Please, please go ahead. Just want to emphasize that tonight we're just asking the council to appoint the administration to to appoint someone. You're not you're not giving the, the job to Mr. Um, I'm sorry, for that. Anderson. Mr. Anderson, right now, because they're still going through the HUD process. Right. So just point of clarification. So we're on the same page, and I thought we were. Okay, is that. Through the RFP process, which, of course, Mr. Anderson said, okay, this is how much it's going to cost us. And we said, okay, no, you guys got to come through. We got to put it out to the public, right? right? So we put it out to the general public to have anybody else that wanted to, that qualified to say they can do what Mr. Anderson is proposing to do. Correct. Nobody else did that, right? That Within the time allotted. Right. Mr. Anderson did. Correct. Right? Through our RFP process. So what we're asking the council to do is give the administration the ability that once the money comes from HUD, which the HUD is... Within release 15, the money about now. 15 days out. Exactly. Yeah. Then we can start work with Mr. Anderson. That's that's, that's what, what we're doing. Correct. All right. Okay. All right, good. good. So that is awarding. Them. That's it. That's exactly. Okay. Yeah, for sure. But we was, you know, again, we had to put that out there because the public, it is what it is. We put the RP process through BidNet, right? And it was like, what, two, three weeks or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. All of you got a copy of that. Okay. All right. Good then. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any nays? I have a motion carries. Item C, please. Consider authorizing the administration to award a contract for renovation services of the old library to Urban Concepts LLC in the amount of not to exceed $193,284. Which put? So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. It's been moved and properly second. Supported. Discussion. Just give us a quick, like, what's happening. Just really quick, please. Real quick. Okay. We submitted a bid um, on BidNet and ended it September 11th. We had eight um, bidders for the process. Um, Mr. Bivens, Mr. Jones, and myself reviewed the the um, bidders. And based on um, the current standard as far as building things and what we requested, we selected um, a, a company that we feel... Um, fell in line with what um, the current cost and things of that nature would be for um, the work that was requested in the bid map. Okay. So this is for, just for, for everyone to be on the same page, the old library, which uh, the city still owns. So we have the library, the amphitheater, at South River, and all of that, and all of the land and the parking lot. The city still owns all of that. We're in control of that. What we're doing is we're converting um, through... Um, Senator Pohanke's office, we had $1.2 million appropriated to the city of Easter, which we do have 600000 of that money now. But we have to spend the money, and and we have to spend, spend the first 600000 before we can request the other 600000 because they want to see us actually doing some work. But we have to actually clean the building up and get the building ready for the actual historical and, and, historical and cultural arts museum. That's what we're transforming this building into. So that'll be a place for our history to be held um, through our, I know that we do have a historical commission. I would hope that, you know, the appointees here, we can make sure we appoint people properly on that board so then they can drive that process as well. But right now what we're doing is we're just cleaning that building up because that building has been vacant for about four or five years, I want to say. What was it? How many? Six, seven, six, seven, okay. Okay, well, far too long. Anyway, so we're ready now to get to work. So we want to get it cleaned up, get the lights on, all that good stuff, you know, get it cleaned up and looking nice and everything, and then we can actually go in. And we're working in conjunction with the Detroit Historical Museum. So if you haven't seen the Detroit Historical Museum along with the African American Museum, they're going to be working with us to make sure that we're putting the right exhibits in along with our commission. So I'm really excited about that. All right. Anything else? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I'm sorry. I just wanted to know why there was such a vast difference in the pricing. I mean, one was like 
forty-five thousand, and the next yeah. was one hundred and twenty. And I, I said the same thing. What 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 made that vast difference? Go ahead, there. Well, um, that's that's a very good question. Um, my thoughts are that some people were just trying to get the contract, so they figured if we would go for the lowest bid. That, that that would be acceptable, but why why go for a low bid and then we still have to do more money to, to make it right? Yeah, because the variations just for the general public, it was like 260000 I believe, was like the highest bid, and then the lowest bid was like, I think, 21000 or something, Mr. Bivens? That's right. Yeah, and I mean, just alone, just to clean that building out alone, you know, I mean, it's terrible over there. You know, I'm not, you know, it's a pigeon coop right now, but we're going to get it together. It's going to be nice. So that was that part of it. All right, um, and this is just the restoration, not the actual no. put together of the Correct. actual building. Yeah. Because Mr. Bivens is going to take the next step. Once we get the building, we have it. You know, it's white, white box by industry standards, making sure, of course, you got all your power on, electric on, all that stuff. Then Mr. Bivens is actually right now working with the architect from, what's that? Sada. Sada through... Our people that we normally use. Right. What's the engineers? I'm the engineers. Yeah. Banish, exactly. Through Banish to actually look at what we need and all that stuff, and then they'll be presenting that to, of course, um, exactly for for approval for the construction for the construction of it. Yeah, because we know we just want to try to get it secure right now. So the next bid you'll probably see is like for windows and you know getting that secure over there because this doesn't necessarily include the windows and the doors over there. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. All right. The motion already passed. All righty. Moving right into public comment. This gives the chance to the general public to uh, speak to this body. Um, of course, and, and I should do a better job at this um, as it relates to the beginning of the meeting. We ask that you fill out a public comment card on with your name on it and then a brief description on what you want to talk about as you approach this body. So if you want to, you can find... Um, some comment cards over here on the on the table coming in to the door. Okay. All right. Thank you so very much. I appreciate that. All right. And I think David, just for and probably through through our city clerk, or either David, either one of you guys answered the question. We did have a motion earlier at the at the orientation session. Does that just do we need to do anything with that or does it fail or I mean is that was the motion to extend something? To actually put it on the agenda for tonight? With regard to the real estate? Right. No, it, it was never approved. Um, well, we didn't say one or the other. It was a, it was motion, and then it was supported, and we had discussion. It was. But I know it wasn't an open session, so that's why I'm asking you, is there anything we need to do with that? Well, you didn't vote on it. No. Well, I think you should probably take a vote to... to to decide what you want to do with it. The agenda's done now. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. For lack of taking action on it. Exactly. Okay, that's what I just wanted to know. All right, moving right along. Public comment. Gabe Henderson, please. Three minutes, please. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Hello, hello, family. How's everybody doing today? Hope Hi. my family is doing well. And keep on, keep on, you know, trucking. Okay. Okay, uh, I want to say a few things. My uh, first thing I want to speak on is the beautification. Okay, uh, we have a, okay, September the 30th, we have an, our dumpsters out at uh, four locations. Westwood Park, Strowman, east of John Daly, uh, Weekly Park, Lamont Park, Okay, Middle Belk and Pine and Booker Dozer. Booker Dozer is our main headquarters for, you know, uh, distribution of gloves and different uh, sign-in sheets of it, different things of different places people would like to go and clean up and leave account of saying if it's possible, they, they clean up an area, uh, let, let it be known that sometimes they can't, you know, dispose of it. And I have that list and I can come around and collect that and put it in. Uh, so uh, hoping everybody, you know, come come out. You know, if you got stuff you want to get rid of, you know, those locations, the dumpsters will be there. And uh, I also want to speak about uh, We Rise, Cor uh, I'm going to blow that, but, but anyway, <laughs> We Rise After School Program, there's another word in there. But anyway, uh, it's starting back 
And this program is set up to, you know, help children uh, develop their skills, uh, after school program, you know, to help tutor their reading and all the things that are necessary to be a, a more positive, you know, and, and, and well together young, young folks. And it's at the Book of Dozier Red Complex on Mondays from 3.30, 3 okay, to uh, 7.30, and also Wednesday, same time. And I want to say this, you know, one of the bigger problems that we have is trying to get the kids there is transportation. Now, any folks, you know, and you could come there and see how the program is uh, coming along. And if you can help along, you might know some children in your neighborhood that might need uh, or can uh, uh, okay, help to get there to our program. It's a good program. Uh, uh, Crystal, Leonard, she's been uh, running this program for over, I guess, almost 10, 10 years now. It's a positive program. We know that our children in the Inkster community are struggling because they're going to different various schools and all that. And uh, I, sometimes they're giving a hard time, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and we try to keep their spirit up, let them know we love them, we're willing to help them, and they can do wonders with a little bit of help from our community. Uh, I want to say that mainly. And, you know, we talked about the problems of our kids, you know, uh, younger, uh, older adults, or older teenagers, that is. If we can get a hold of them when they're young, nip it in the bud with positivity to get them to love, to care, to do right and all that, you know, some of the things that we're having problems with our older uh, uh, teenagers and our adults, I think we can slow down that, you know, deterioration of, you know, what we do in our community. Keep it, right, keep it positive. And I, I think you. that's your time. I, yeah, I beg your pardon. So that's your time. Three minutes. That's my time. Yes, sir. Oh, we have other people that have to. Speak. Okay, I understand that. And I'm going, and I love you too. <laughs> you know, it's a beautiful picture on there right there. Do I you want to see too. it? We just run okay, the meeting. Okay, okay. Just general meeting. Okay, all yes, right. Sir. I know. Uh -huh. I know. Okay. Mr. 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 <laughs> all right. <laughs> Denise Champagne. Yeah, just speak up, please, for the. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Please, let's have order, please. Go ahead. Um, I'm here as a senior to request our condolences to your family for Friday. But we also want to thank you for providing the dessert. Oh, we should have. Thank you. They loved it. Okay. Everything went well. The cookout went well. We had a great time. And thank you for your support. You're welcome. Of course. And also thank you, everyone, tonight for your support of the Bluefield Senior Center, Wellness Center for us. It's been a long time coming, and I've become my own client. I made it to the program, so <laughs> I'm looking forward to this being built so that when I retire, I have a nice place to go. All right. That's awesome. All right. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Dr. Galani, I have two. I got you. I got you. She had, yeah, she had two slips in. I got you. I'm running. You want to come? Okay, well, come on then. Come on. Come on, Barbara Cooper. Barbara Cooper, come for Barbara Cooper? Yeah, Barbara Cooper. No, I thought it was in order. That, that's how you put it in. There you go. I got you. <laughs> Go ahead, ma'am. I know I was first. Yep. Good evening. Good evening. Mayor, council, and the residents of Inkster. I just like to once again thank everybody for helping our barbecue dinners be a success. And on October the 21st is our All You Can Eat Pancake Breakfast from 8 a.m. to 12 noon at the Book of Doja Recreational Complex. And we're looking for everyone to come out and support the good fellows. No child without a Christmas. Thank you so much. All right. Did you give a time? Did you have, did you have a time? Yes. It's from 8 to 12 noon. 12 noon is when we eat. <laughs> <laughs> October the 21st, donation is $15. All you can eat pancakes. And we do have bacon. We have sausage. We have turkey sausage. We have grits. And we have fruit cups. Right. Hey, be good. Tea, co wait, tea, coffee, water, uh, cranberry juice, apple juice, and grape juice. All right. That's Trying good. to get some for everybody. Go ahead, Mr. Henderson. She got one more. Oh, and we do have tickets. We do have tickets. Okay. We okay. You want to take? You can give us some more time here. We'll give us some more time. We're going to give us somebody else's time. Asia. Asia. 
It's been a long time since I did this, but good evening, uh, council and mayor good and evening. citizens of Angster. It's been a long time since I did this, since I had her. Okay. Uh, I would like to discuss uh, GFL. It has come to my attention on Riverview. Uh, the citizens are being told different information as far as what the council and the mayor is being told. We are being told when we call GFL that we didn't pay our taxes and that's why our garbage containers is not being picked up along with our recycling bins. They are also telling us that they're low on staff. Well, they've been telling us that since 2019 and then COVID came in, which we understood. We were very patient, diligent with that. But when you say um, we're not going to pick up your trash because you're not paying your taxes, that's a different level. And I've also spoken to Mr. Bivens about that. Mm -hmm. And that is false information. They are also telling us that we're not recycling properly, but everybody on my street, Riverview, uses the, um, it's a little manuscript that's on the recycling bin that actually tells you what to recycle. And I'm speaking on the behalf of my neighbors. They do actually recycle properly. However, Riverview and Justine has been redlined when it comes down to GFL. Uh, so that's one of my talkers I wanted to talk about. Okay. Uh, we on it? We'll, we'll get she all right? Oh, okay. Um, right. Another topic I would like to talk about is the bike trail. Um, I know Inkster finest is like really strapped and I know they're really stressed out. However, um, we are going to need some type of patrol around it just for safety. Uh, the trailer park residents are getting a little bit rough, if you will. Oh, you need to get her. Okay. You need to get her. No, no. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. It's been a long time. Look, the last time I did this, I was pregnant with her. So it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Um, as far as the trailer park people go, they're, um, they're trying to come down and hunt. Um, we have two turkeys that has been named in the city of Inkster, and they've been here, be oh my God, before I was born, those two turkeys been here, uh, male and female. They just this year had seven, I think 12 babies. I'm hearing wow. two different numbers. They just had babies. They're really small and cute. However, people from the trailer park and some strangers, stop. Some strangers, <laughs> some strangers um, from the bike trail are coming out thinking that it's okay to hunt. Now, I do know that it's okay to fish in the bike trail if you have a fishing permit or a fishing license. Uh, Wayne County told me about that. But however, our deers are not safe and our other wildlife is not safe um, with the strangers coming out the bike trail and the trailer park people thinking it's okay to hunt down bucks. I've even had people come in my backyard thinking that they can bring a 12-gauge shotgun, if you will, in my backyard trying to hunt down a buck. And that is not appropriate or safe. And um, I have a toddler, so I'm very concerned about that. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. My kid. Um, what else? Okay, so as far as the bike trail goes, I will. Um, I also talked to Councilman um, Shaw about it. If we can do like a community um, environment where we can like just take turns watching it, because for some reason, like strangers after dark, they feel like it's appropriate to come walking through the trail between twelve and four a.m. and they're causing a lot of ruckus on our streets. We hear like the neighborhood dogs. Our dogs are like real trained. They're not wild beasts or anything like that. They're properly mannered. But they're coming in people's yards and the dogs are like um, acting as in to protect their yard, you know, and they're getting aggressive. Like one neighbor said that, you know, somebody walked through the bike trail that she caught it on her ring camera and walked through the bike trail. And he was getting rough with her dog because he wanted to come at her property. So that is something we need to, um, you know, focus on in the future. Like we have kids on this street. We have toddlers. We have young adults, teenagers on up, if you will. Between the bike trail and the trailer park, our young people are seeing the wrong influence. Like, you know, it's kids out here riding their bikes and everything, and you should not be walking down the street with a 12-gauge thinking you might have to take home a buck. Mm -hmm. That is uh, highly inappropriate, and um, I think the council and the mayor should be aware of that actions. Um, that is all I have to say. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, good. Question for her? Please, yes. go ahead. When you contact GFL, do you all get who you spoke to? Please. Uh, no, we don't get who we spoke well, can to. Can you ask them from now on, ask who am I speaking with? What? Or at least get the date and the time you called so we can narrow down who's Here. having out this information. Okay, so the answer to your question, Ms. Uh, Councilman Sandra Wiley, um, 
I do have the dates and times. It's nothing to pull up a phone list or a call, call log. However, like when I did call and I asked for somebody's name, I even spoke to uh, Mr. Bivens that that was the incorrect name. He told me there was nobody that works there up under that name. That was a weird situation. So they're telling us false information as the citizens and are also telling you guys another situation, mm -hmm. okay. which is not good. Okay, well, another thing, because our, our info, what we're trying to do is solve the issue. Um, just, just a suggestion, like you give a name, uh, you ask for a name and they give you a false one. Most people are identified by some sort of identification Voice. number or things of that number, nature. So just keep asking. That's all I'm saying. So give us something to work with. So I've been trying to like do this, like without you guys help for like a long time, maybe like what well, I said since 2019, maybe like in my yeah, since 2019. So I've been doing my own detail, my own law log with that before I came to you guys about that. However, I have called multiple times and like they switch up the phone, like they'll try to change their voice, try to make us out. So it's like a comedy joke to them, but it's really a serious matter when you coming down to like rotents and other animals getting into your dumpsters. I'm okay, sure Mr. when GFL came to us, they gave us the name of a person. I have his card still. I will give you that name, and from now on, you ask for him. Thank you and so much, And then you leave a message for him, and then you expect a callback from him. Okay? Thank you so much, Councilman. All right, then. Anthony? Anthony? Anthony, last name? Sherrod? Is that right? Sherrod. Okay. Yes. Good evening, uh, council, mayor, and uh, residents, especially the police department. Um, I come in here to uh, voice a lot of concerns and issues that are in my neighborhood. But here um, today, I'm here to say thank you because we did get action. We got it quiet in our neighborhood. And we hope to keep it that way and we want to keep ourselves vigilant on you know, watching what goes on so that we can transfer that to the police department. Well, thank you for doing what you said you were going to do. And the uh, only other thing I had was um, that we had discussed last time that we may look into was the animal control about the rodents, not not uh, uh, rats or anything like that, but skunks, skunks and groundhogs. Mm. And everyone's got them, but mm. we're just totally overrun with them. I mean, you're not supposed to catch them. And I'm not saying I've caught them, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, what you're told is that, you know, you need to get in touch with a, with a company and they'll, right. they'll come out. They want 200, we talked about this before, $250 just to catch one. You can't afford that. And I've seen about four or five recently. Okay. I'll put it that way that aren't around anymore, but, you know, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> but anyway, that was, I, I'm here to say that. You know, I don't just come to fuss and complain. I'm here to praise you guys, too. Oh, we really and I also know what departments to go to now from coming to these meetings, who to talk to specifically for problems I have that I don't necessarily have to bring to the council. Yeah. If I don't get results, then I'll come to you guys. We appreciate so that. I want to say thank you. Thank you so much. Walter, let's follow up with the animal control, the new animal control officer, but also to we know we need to work with the county and the state as well. We know we're doing a lot of infrastructure work in the city of Easter, and that's where the, the, they're moving around because we're you know, disturbing their natural habitat. At the same time, it's just like overrun with groundhogs for sure. Okay. Mr. Mayor, uh, can I make please. a suggestion? Go ahead. Um, my sister has a problem with them, and it's in Detroit. And she says they have a number they call where they give them the stuff to put down. So can we check into that? Did we used to do something like that? I heard we used to do something like that. We used to give people like poison or whatever. Well, I don't yeah. think it's poison, but they oh, don't kill me. Let's <laughs> <laughs> remove them. Come up, come up real quick and speak on that real quick. My siblings went to Inkster High back in the day. So I can actually speak on the ground house. It was not a package per se. It was a smoke cannon. What you do is you put it in their first hole. Usually ground house make two holes, one to go in, one to go out. Um, you put the smoker in the first hole. You cover the second hole up with a rock or like a center block and it smokes them. And what happens is you pull the smoker out and they'll come running out and they'll make a habitat somewhere else. They will remember that in their mind. Like, you know, smokers. 
Smokers don't yeah. work. Well, that was the. I think uh, immune to them in Easter. Oh, okay. Well, that was the pack. You were saying like we used to get poison. Yeah. We did not get poison. We gave smokers out back in the past. Okay. Yeah, not uh, poison. Okay. Um, Inkster is like humane when it comes down to animals. We don't believe in killing DNR. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. We're real strict I with that. It'll definitely be DNR we can work with, with that. I'm yes. just saying that she says that they give them this stuff to put down. Good. So I'm just wondering if we as officials can inquire from Detroit's whatever no. department that is to see what they're using and if we can use it too. Yes, ma'am. We have a very close relationship with the city of Detroit. Okay. We can get that information. That, that was my only thing. Okay, perfect. Uh, Dr. Galani? Great. Now, oh, Dr. Galani, she's sitting right in front. You had two of them in, actually, Dr. Oh. Maybe Octavia. Somebody... Probably oh, Octavia. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. And hello, everyone. And mine hello. is short and it's not exciting. Uh, I'm here just to let you know I am the new president of Chamber of Commerce. And also, the calendar is coming up. So we need for um, the businesses in the city and uh, the city itself to start working together and getting it going. Good. And um, that's basically it. Okay, Thank it's you. all good. Yes, I know. Yeah, that's good news. Yeah, and keep working together. There you go. And the deadline, sorry, is 10 2023 So it's next month. For? For the ads. Okay, for the ads. For the so let's Good. start asking to get okay. the ads and getting this thing going. And, Good. And let's so formulate an email uh, 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 email to us with that. And then that way we can do maybe a flyer. We can have Troy work on a flyer and we can pop that out. But I'm talking about a flyer. Oh, okay. That's what I was saying. Yes, we can. So this way, uh, we, uh, we're going to yeah. be sending it to all the households, hopefully, and people in the city know about the businesses here so we can support the businesses in the city Very because important. for every dollar spent in the city, 67 cents of it stays in the city. Very or important. That's what we need to do. Thank you. Thank you, you very much. Right. Chantel? Wellesley? Yes. Yeah. Right here, right there. Just give it right to the city clerk and she'll hand them out. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Chantel Wesley. I um, live here and do business here. I do hair and make and sell natural products online. So recently I decided to uh, do some free community courses teaching small business and hair. So I did, uh, it's gonna be at the Inkster Rec. It's various dates and uh, you can register online. I just wanted to let you guys know. Can you say the dates for just the general public and those it that starts are starts Sunday, this Sunday the 29th is on Sundays, two to four. And I see you have your phone number on here and you uh -huh. I'm teaching natural hair classes and entrepreneurship, small business, and making extra money free at the Inks Direct. So, can you um, also, if you would want to, just again for the general public so they can mm -hmm. contact you because everybody doesn't have this? Okay. You want to give them your contact information and how they can sign up? Okay. Without the QR code? I'm, um, my number is 734 444 and um, Somebody online, this say repeat it again. Seven three four, four four four, three zero two one. That's uh, Distinguished Hair LLC. It's online, distinguishedhairllc.com or on Google. And um, I've been in business about twenty years in Inkster, about thirteen years. So yeah, I'm hoping to. I'm I'm not where I want to be in business, but some friends wanted me to just share how to just do what I'm already doing because I haven't had a job since 2001. So I was just going to share some extra income earning things. There's a lot of laws that allow us to do a lot from home legally. And I don't think people know even making food and selling it. So I want to share all those different avenues of extra money that you can do without all the degrees and money for schools from what you know. Yeah. So. I think everybody can use some extra money. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so very much. We appreciate the service. It's going to be good. 
Looking forward to getting my son and my daughter in this one. <laughs> Get them going. All right, Curtis T. Barsh. I first would like to congratulate the city on the beautiful car show uh, very on nice. um, South River Park Drive. There were many beautiful bikes and cars. And I would like to encourage mayor, council, and the general public to go to the upcoming cyber school. I took yet another tour. I take one every now and then just to keep up, you know, with the, with the progress that's being made. Actually, for the first couple months, it didn't matter. All I could do was smell it. I could just, you know, go up and see what you're doing, what's in that dumpster. But now we can walk through. You're talking about at the old city hall? With at the, the old city hall. Yeah. The ground has been cleared. You know, everything has been cleared out. And of course, there's still the plumbing problems. The electrical, electrical a, a <laughs> engineer has been in, so it is going um, a little bit slower than anticipated because of the additional problems that come up. But they are being taken care of as they come up. But I would encourage everybody who can take a few minutes to go and just take a walk through and see that. We are going to have a school of higher education in our city that's going to afford young people employment at home. It'll be awesome. Yes. <clears throat> I secondly, well, I, I um, complimented the car show because it was really nice cars there. But I was surprised, I was shocked and not happy about all the um, political signs that were on city property. I had seen them removed once, and I know that at least two of the people are sitting councilman, Mr. Chisholm, and um, our former clerk, uh, Felicia Rudledge, who ran the elections during three mayors would have known that we can't do that on city property. And just because you take it from off the ground, does that mean you can put it on the air, in the air? Because city property is anybody's property, your house. You can, if you could start from 50 feet under and so that it reflected as far as 83 feet, 83 above ground, uh, the ground, then you would be legal. But the reality is, it's just not right for people who know better to display signs at a public event when we came to see cars. There were a few people there who had permission to be on the private property, but there were many others who did not and just made use of Inkster Road, the Inkster Road um, fencing to display public uh, to play display political material, and I think it is very wrong. Most of us haven't been able to do it when we ran successfully or unsuccessfully. It's just not right. Everybody in the city, because this is city-owned property, is not happy about anybody who's running. Everybody is running and they're gonna support somebody, but I don't think that public property should be used for their advertisement. Okay, take a note of that. All right, thank you so very much. All right, look like we got through those successful. All yes. right, city clerk. I have, um, as everyone knows, it's another election cycle. I wanted to just remind everyone that ballots will be available for the November 7th election um, on September 23rd. Absentee ballots. So 
I look forward to seeing you all or having your ballot mailed in. So just for a point of clarification, on September 23rd, the absentee ballots will be mailed out to people's homes or do they have no, to request be, them or what? what they'll what? need to request and those applications are already being mailed out. Um, but ballots will be available on September 23rd, absentee ballots where you can come in and just fill out an application and request one. But you will, if you are on the permanent voter absentee voter list, you will get your application in the mail when? with no no assertion to us. You'll just get them So then the I get my application, I fill it back in. When is my ballot coming? As soon as we receive your app. But if we're on the permanent list, we get that in September? Yes. You'll get your application in September. No, not an application. If you're already on the permanent list, you don't have to fill out another application, do you? So we're talking about two different things. We're talking about a permanent ballot list that if, if you were involved in the primary, you did get an application where you could select a permanent ballot. Those will automatically go out to you. People that weren't involved in the districts, um, in the primary election, still need to send an application and check the box that they want to be have a permanent ballot. However, the presidential primary in February, everybody's going to have to ask for a ballot. Okay, well, I stopped at the clerk's office. And she said I was on the permanent list already. So I'm trying to find out. You're saying I need to send another one in? If you're on the permanent absentee right. list, which means you will automatically get an application. An we application have a, or a ballot? An application. Only people who will automatically get a ballot is if you live in District 6. <coughs> And you check the box. Gotcha. But there, it comes with a huge caveat because in February, nobody's going to get a ballot automatically. It just wasn't thought out well when the law changed. So you have to request it. You're going to have to request in February because it's partisan based. But you can come here September 23rd to City Hall and request an application from you to get a ballot? Yes. Okay. And if you're already on the permanent ballot list, because you live in District 6 and you check the box, then you will get a ballot automatically. Yeah, okay. it's a lot of... All right. So, like, yeah. that's a lot of... I'm confused right what's, now a little bit, but okay. The law what's the reason? I just yeah, really want to make sure they the understand if anything. Yeah. Yeah, I get the six. Make sure six, they, but okay. she still said they got to still get an application. Not six. A permanent application. They'll get a permanent application. Not District 6. District 6 won't get a permanent application? They won't get an application? They get a ballot. They will get a ballot if they selected if they signed that. If, yes. if they signed it. Yes, but if they did not, they would still need to request a application for a ballot. Okay. So Councilwoman Wiley said that she stopped by the clerk's office and was told that she's on the permanent list. So she's just going to receive an application. Because I'm assuming somewhere she checked, somewhere saying that she always want to have a application. No, be, well she will get an application. Right, so she'll get an application. Get an but like, if say for instance, I didn't, you know, I, I'm I don't live in District Six, so I didn't, I wasn't in that. But at the same time, I would have to request, even though I'm a registered voter, I would still have to request an application for an absentee ballot. Correct. Yes, if you did not become a permanent absentee voter. Exactly. Gotcha. It's just I see what she's saying. Two different things because the law changed. So basically what she's saying is that if you check the box before saying that you want to receive an absentee application, you're going to receive one at home for you to, to fill out. Yes. 
send it back in to us, and then we're going to send you out a ballot. That's what she's saying now. But you would have had to actually do that. So like she said, it wasn't really thought out because, again, you know, just send us, you know, what are you talking about? Send, send us all applications and it is what it is. But it's not you. This is how no, it was. No, done. it's just how the law is. Right, that's how the law, is. So how the law is. So if you want an absentee ballot, this is just to the general public, on September 23rd, from my understanding, what I'm hearing is that you'll be able to come here to City Hall and request an application or yes. how else could we do it? Can we get online somewhere? Yes, you can. You can also fill out an application online, and it will be delivered into our inbox. Where, where at? Where can they get that online? State of Michigan website. Okay. And just go under elections and voter. Everything is there. You can fill out an application for a ballot, and you can also check the box that you want to be on the permanent ballot list. And we'll get that information in our inboxes. But if you have any question, just call us. Or come up. Yeah, like you do. Okay, if you're on the permanent ballot list and you did all of this last year to be on the permanent ballot list, all you're getting this time is an application to get a, a, yep. a ballot. Exactly. Yes. Well, why do it at all then? If you got to go through this process. Well, the law changed. The law changed in 22. Please, order, please. The voters said, we want to just get an application that says we can have a ballot. So people that select that option, we will be sending them a ballot. However, in the presidential primary, we won't be able to just send you a ballot because you have to declare a party to receive a ballot. So while we're rolling it out, the state of Michigan is rolling this out now. In February, we're going to have to take a step back and everybody's going to have to ask for their ballot. No thought of ours, just yeah. wow. how the law rolled out. Okay. All right. I'm pretty sure we'll have more discussion on this. City so Treasurer, you got anything for us? Uh, no, I signed the management representation letter today and sent it back to the auditor so it'll be uploaded tomorrow. As it relates to the audit. So the audit will be uploaded tomorrow. Okay. How soon and then, do we expect our monies? <laughs> I like that. Like for sure. Day. Yeah, because we know we got some monies for the water and the general fund. Mm -hmm. So after that, it should be really coming right in because, you know, the good thing, too, even with... It's good good and bad, but, you know, Plant, Plant Moran, of course, is leaving us in October. But we're transferring over to deputy, like deputy treasurers from the state. Basically, they used to work with the state. So Mr. Rod has all this understanding. He has all the overlay, and, and he has those relationships. So with that, with Joyce Parker, they're gonna really be able to expedite a lot of things for us even more quickly and seamlessly. So we're gonna get that money right away because they've been on top of it. Okay. All right. All right. No. Fire Chief, got anything for us? No, sir. All right. No, sir. What about that $10 million? What are we talking about, no, sir? Hey. Speak on that. No, I'm talking about you. you well, I know you wanted me to speak on it, but you speak on it. Your department, you guys, I mean, you know, I, I know I tell you what to do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you doing that right? No, no we're yeah, just talking about it, man, because you guys are doing a good job. Council, what the mayor is speaking on. Last week, we got an email from the state of Michigan saying that we are in a running out for a 10 million plus grant to do water projects, water, put water mains in for the city of Easter. And so far this year, we got, we got close to 30, $34 million from the state. And so far, if everything goes right, we will only have to pay $2 million of that back. All the right. rest of it will be forgiven. All right. Now, that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> No, no, I appreciate I appreciate that. It's teamwork. Teamwork well, makes just, the dream just work. Just to let y'all know, a lot of this is happening through Mayor Wembley's uh, leadership and connecting me with the I appreciate you saying that. We, we, we partner with the state through his leadership, and a lot of money is coming to the city of Easton now 
but we didn't get it in the past because overall, if you look at it, my department's got close to $67 million. Can we get a loan? <laughs> the general fund, right? Yeah, yeah. Can we get a loan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, are, we are. I mean, just to add to that just a little bit as it relates to the school deficit, the school deficit, the, the rest of the school deficit will be in uh, October, will be forgiven. Um, for the city of East. Um, also... Also, too, we're lobbying right now with the with with our with our senator working with Rep. Wigella, you know, this is what it is. Um, but the city of Easter owes the state of Michigan three million dollars. It was a loan that we received back in, I believe it was like 2015 during the consent agreement of, of, of the city. So we're paying right now about three hundred thousand dollars annually back which the city can't afford to do that. So I've asked for them if they could please add that into supplemental. So please, all the prayer warriors, continue to pray for that because we'll also have the debt eliminated from the school and prayerfully the city's debt to the state of Michigan. So please call, pray, believe it, and it's going to happen. Okay? I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Bill. All right. Anything over there, Walter? Uh, yes, this Thursday we will be opening up our um, mini police station over at 4310 Middle Belt. Um, it is our dedication and grand opening of the Alex A. Chapman Community Policing and Training Center. That's where we'll be training um, our new officers, our auxiliary officers will be there, and it's a mini station for the community for you all to have a second um, police department, so faster emergencies. Um, faster response times. Um, we do have five candidates in the academy right now, five students in the academy right now. All from Inkster. Go All ahead. from Inkster. <laughs> so, this, uh, so this Thursday, if you will, just come down. We'll have food, we'll have music, we'll have beverages um, to open up our brand new mini police department. Oh, I'm sorry, 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. This Thursday. This Thursday. Walter, let me ask you, is that where you're going to have the uh, the cadets at, too? The, not the, what, what do you call it, the, the youth explorers? Are you going to have the explorers there, yes, too? the explorers are going to be there, too. Okay, good. Okay, explorers are gonna be there. How, how do, do, do we have any information yet on how, because I, I had a few kids that want to sign up to be an explorer with the police department. Is, do you have any information on that, as well? Uh, not at this time, but I can okay. check with our assistant chief tomorrow, because she's the one overseeing the explorer program. Okay. Um, I know we did go to a job fair, like, two weeks ago. And we recruited a few kids um, at the job fair for it. Okay. So um, I just have to get more information from her. Okay. I appreciate that. All right. Then this, just just for, go ahead, ma'am. Yeah. Please. Is this a station that's going to be manned 24 hours? You can't yeah. go there the hall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 24 hours, you're going to be over there. <laughs> By yourself. You're going to move in. We're just going to live there. That's what like, yeah, I understand that, but he says it's there for police emergency, so I want to know what. That's a good question. They, that I'm, what that might be, and will there be patrol cars there too? There will be patrol cars there. Now, as far as the time when they open and close, I'll have to double check with the chief on that. Okay, now if uh, because if those people in the area are counting on that to be there, and they go there, and it's not, they should be aware that that's just a. Or is there another mechanism at that location where they can get police officers right away? Like, is there a phone that goes directly to the police department and you say, help, I'm here at 4310 Middle Belt? You need a red phone over there. That's a good idea. Blue light. There's phones that are set up there, though. They still trying to work on some stuff. But is that, is, does it have public access after hours? We'll have to check with the chief on that one. I think that's just a good idea if it's a way to, you know. And then we know that the auxiliaries are volunteers because we love our volunteers and we thank so much for our auxiliary. They do a great job all the time. So we know that we'll be having them there. Sometimes they'll be there all day at night and all that other stuff. But I think what she's saying makes sense if it's a little maybe window booth or something. I don't know. You know, if it's something, I don't know. You know, but it got to be secure. Well, you know, we're going to have cameras over there and all that good stuff. So, you know. And, and, and the good thing, and I'm waiting for Chief, and I wanted to put him on the spot tonight because he's finally worked out. And I don't know if you know the details to all of this as it relates to the DTE um, terms with us putting cameras on the poles and that. And I know yeah. that he 
pretty much have gotten to the end of that. But we do have, at least at Easter Road and Michigan Avenue, we do have it where we can actually see the cameras from the station right now, right? Correct. There, there's a few cameras in the city that we can see. Uh, Michigan and Inkster is one of them. Um, there's a few at Inkster Housing. Um, can't remember where the other cameras are, but they are putting up more cameras. And I know he has me uh, being in charge of the grants. I am looking for more a, a grant for more cameras to put around the city. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I know we don't want to necessarily say all the locations, but at the same time, we are watching. So I'm we just, are. I'm just, messing <laughs> with you. I'm just messing with you. Okay. By the time, yeah. by the time you have your um, grand opening, will you have a time to let people know? That after hours don't come here or something like that, just so they know. Correct. I'm yeah, saying yeah. to know is to act appropriate. Yeah, 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 operating hours. Opening, on yeah, we'll, I'll have all that. Okay. For everyone. Thank you. And also October the sixth through October the tenth, we're having um, first ever Faith in Blue. Um, the police department will be partnering with um, most of the churches, yeah, if not yeah. all the churches in the city of Inkster, to hold um, one big huge. Party for the weekend, as I may say. Friday is going to be our skating party. Saturday will be our cookout. Sunday, you will see um, up to two police officers in, in the churches. And then Monday, we're going to arrange a meeting for the pastors and the chief to have a sit down one on one so they can give um, any issues that they may have that they can share with the chief. But more details is going to come out about that no later than this Friday. So do you have times yet for the skating party? And Yeah, the skating party is going to be October the 6th from 6 to 10. It'll be at the Inkster Family Skate Center? Yeah, it's going to be at the Inkster Family Skate Center. Okay, and then the cookout is going to be at the amphitheater? Yeah, the cookout is going to be at the amphitheater that Saturday from 12 to 5. At South River and Inkster Road? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, we know we had a really good use of it. Now, I don't know. Like, you better partner with the E-Town Riders. I mean, <laughs> Mr. Hunter been, Mr. Hunter been putting it on for the city. <laughs> they, they, they blessed it. They christened it the right way. And it was a phenomenal event. But we know that it's going to be phenomenal. Yes, sir. So whatever you need from us, I know that uh, Pastor Hearns is... Pastor, you still the, the president of the Easter Minister Alliance? Yes, sir. So we definitely want to get you in conjunction with him and, you know, make sure we get all of everybody out. Everybody needs to participate. I really like that. That's going to be good. All right, then. All right. And just as I'm looking over at Derek, one thing that we did need to, to just for point of clarification, it was a motion on the on the table to actually add an item to the agenda. We went into closed session. We should address that. So we know that what we talked about already. So we did have a motion as it relates to adding the um, extension onto the agenda by Councilwoman Wiley. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we had a second for... Uh, for discussion by uh, Councilman Chisholm. So we should actually vote on that and then move forward. Okay. All right, then. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any nays? Nay. Okay, you guys understand what I'm talking about? Okay. All right, so we're on the same, we're on the same page. Councilwoman Wiley actually made a motion to put on the agenda, right? To put on the agenda for us to extend the development agreement or the purchase agreement for in Annapolis closed Point. session, we decided something different. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So oh, we, we, we right, so we needed to, again, because we didn't want to leave it open-ended and we need to handle the city's business. As a council okay, person, well, you had two than, people. Rather than the yeah. council people voting on that, yeah. how about if I rescind the motion? There you go. Okay, and then they can handle it the way they suggested in closed session. All right, perfect then. So, Mr. Dodell, I expect for you to work with Mr. Hearns right after the meeting, please. Okay? All right, good then. All right, moving right into Mayor. Mayor, for the record. Please. The reason it was discussed in closed session is because it was involved in contract negotiations. There you go. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. All right. Councilman Wiley? What? Do you have anything for us? No. All right, Councilman Washington. <laughs> I just want to send a big thank you to Code Enforcement. I've been complaining about this building, 1173 Henry Ruff Road. And I'm sure all you guys know that building sitting right over there on Oakwood and Henry Ruff. They're now putting a new face on it. It's looking good over there. All It's so many businesses coming over there. We have the um, building right there on Henry Ruff where the beauty supply and the grocery stores used to be. They're putting a new face over there. So it's looking good over there. Um, also with... Uh, 
you know, Mr. Bivens keeping the parks cut and everything. It's looking really good. So I don't have no complaints today. Just wanted to give my thanks to both of those departments. <laughs> Speaking of that, that's the old save lot of Henry Ruff and Cherry Hill. So we will be having a grocery store back there. So the uh, owner's in negotiation right now. I've been talking to them back and forth. So the grocery store will be going back into that area. So we're really excited about that. Um, it, it, it's happening. It's not just talk about it. It's it's happening. And of course, and if you haven't been over to Mr. B's Soul Food that's right there, that parking lot, get over there. Call me when you get there. I'll be over there with you. So good food. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Councilman Shaw? I have nothing, Mr. Chair. All right. Councilman Williams? Nothing tonight. All right. Councilman Chisholm? Yes. I just wanted to encourage everybody to support their uh, union brothers and sisters who are fighting for better wages and better health. <laughs> You all know I was a former union employee for the CWA for 11 years and nine months, but some of my colleagues here, as well as myself, either work for or have, were recipients or retired or are currently working um, in union positions, and we all benefit from that, especially this community of Inkster. So I just wanted to make sure if you don't have an opportunity to um, um, help them in any way, shape, or form by being on the picket line, you can always make donations at the local union halls in which who are accepting all types of toiletries and foods and canned goods that we don't even realize will be needed in positions as such when workers take a stance against corporate greed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, Monday night football. All Monday right. night football. Close motion. <laughs> motion for adjournment. So moved, Mr. Chair. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody say naked stay. Meeting closed. Yeah.